I'd like to prove this combinatorial identity two ways. The first might be the easier one to work with because you can just use algebra and that's where we can directly use the formula for n choose k, that it's n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now what I encourage you to do is I would not start and work with both sides at the same time because it's very easy to confuse yourself and, 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 and have just something messy looking. I will start with the, I'm going to choose the right hand side, it will be a little easier for me and then, and then have a series of equals and then arrive at the left hand side, okay? So here we go. Okay, so the proof, the right hand side, n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1 is equal to, so I'm allowed to use this formula, n times, well this is going to be n minus 1 factorial divided by, we have k minus 1 factorial times n minus 1 minus, k, excuse me, k minus 1 factorial. This is all in the denominator. Now we need to do some simplification here. We know, first of all, I can simplify this. If you take n times n minus 1 factorial, this is n factorial. Then this, there's not much I can do. Now here, what do I have? I have an n minus 1, and then I have a minus minus, which is a plus 1, then I have a minus k. So this is n minus k factorial. And now you can use this as your guide because I, have, I need a k times n choose k. And I'm almost there. I can take this and multiply by 1. So if I multiply by 1 in the form of k over k, I have not changed my fraction or the equality, so then I have n factorial, k minus 1 factorial, n minus k factorial. And finally, k times k minus 1 factorial is k factorial, so I have k n factorial over k factorial and minus k factorial, which is exactly k times n choose k. So this is the first proof, and this used just what we know about factorials and the formula for n choose k. Now let's do a combinatorial proof of this identity, and what this means is you must have some story or some thing that you are coming up with that both the left hand side and the right hand side both count. And if they're both counting the number of ways to do the exact same task, then they must be equal. So this is the way we proceed with a combinatorial proof. So here is my story for what they're going to count. So suppose I have n students and I want to select a group of k k students with a designated leader. Okay, you know we like to do group work, so perhaps I'm trying to have a group of K that works on a particular problem and one of those K is my designated leader that will stand up and present to the class. Something like this. Well, I can count, suppose I have a students and I want to select a group of K with a designated leader, okay? So I, the number of ways I can first choose the N students, for the K students, excuse me, the K students for the group. Then select a leader.
from out of the group. This is one way that I could form this group with a designated leader. And how many ways are there if I think about it this way? There are, maybe I'll do this part in blue. So there are, well first I have a group of N. I want to choose K out of them with no order. There's no order to my group. Now I have a group of K. This is my group that will be working on problems. Okay, then, now I select a designated leader. And I already have K students. I, there's K number of ways to pick a leader. So I multiply, and this is multiplication rule. There are N choose K times K, many ways to do this. So now you see that my story is here, the left-hand side. Okay, now I need to argue why there are also this many ways to do this exact same thing, which is choosing this group. Well, the other thing that I can do is I could also first choose a leader. from the class. Once I have a leader, I can select the rest of the group. So then, select K minus one more group members. And if I think about it like this, again, it's multiplication rule. There are, first I select the leader. There are n ways to do this because I have a class of n. And then from the rest of the class, I pick the other k minus one group members. There are this many ways to do this. So therefore, we're finished in a way. Okay, we're finished. We have shown that k times n choose k equals n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1 as they're both the number of ways to do the same task. And this is exactly what we need in a combinatorial proof. You notice the difference between this and the other method. Never in this entire method did I use the formula for n choose k. I did not use that it was n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. I just used what it means from a counting point of view. Let's give a combinatorial proof for this identity, which means we are not using the formula for n choose k as n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Means we will find, you know, we will find something that the left hand side and the right hand side both count. Now, when one of the sides, in this case it's the left hand side, is a single binomial coefficient, you really want to think about subsets because we know by definition n choose k is the number of k element subsets of an n element set. And so if we think about this side as being subsets, we already have something that the left hand side counts. And then we just need to argue why this would count. So this is, this is my strategy here. And it's going to go very much like um, a proof we did in class. So here, if I kind of look at it, I see 2n plus 2, and then the other ones, I see 2n's. And so I'm going to start uh, with a set with 2n elements, and, and then I will take two things that are not in A. And then I'm going to let B equal a union these two elements. So notice here 
the cardinality of b is 2n plus 2. So then, this one, 2n plus 2, choose. n plus 1 is the number of subsets of b with n plus 1 elements. Okay? This is our setup and this is going to allow us to, to get going. What we need to do is argue why the right hand side also counts the same thing. Maybe before I do that, let's draw a Venn diagram because we can really see what's happening this way. So over here I will have a Venn diagram. Here's my set A. It has N elements. Oh, three, six, okay, I have an even number. Two N elements, excuse me. This is my set A. And then I take something not an A and something else not an A, and all together I will outline, I take A, union those two, and this would be B. Okay? It has two n plus two elements. Okay, well, I'll say subsets of B with cardinality. n plus 1, this is what we're trying to count, come in three types. So the first type, well, maybe I need a new letter here. I have some subset of B. The cardinality is n plus 1. And, you know, one possibility is that neither of these two elements here, x and y, r and b. I mean, c, excuse me, c could be fully inside a, a full a subset of a. So here, x and y, neither of these are in c. Okay, this is one possibility. Now, how many of this type are there? Well, so in this case, I can make this common if I want that C is a subset of A, and there are, well, A has 2n, 2n, 2n plus 1, uh, many of this type. This is one possibility. Okay, what's another possibility? Well, you could have C, a subset of B. And you could have both here. So if you do this, both of these are in C, right? So this is two of the elements in C, and then the other, so then C intersected with A. Well, we know, of course, this is a subset of A, and the cardinality of C intersect A is, well, it's 2 less, n minus 1. And there are 2n, choose n minus 1, many of this type. We have one more type, and that is that C is contained in B. The number of things of C is n plus 1, cardinality. But this case, well, this says we've treated the case where neither x and y are C in C. We've treated the case where both x and y are in C. And the final case is that x is in C or y is in C, but not both. So exactly 1. Exactly one. So in this case, so then we have C intersect A, the cardinality 
is n. Okay, because there's one less. We have maybe x is in c, or maybe y is in c, but not both. And how many are of this type? There are, well, the number of subsets, let's fix one of them, just say with x. We would have 2n, choose n, that's with x. There's also 2n, choose n with y, so we have two of these. Or you could say, you could also count, okay, pick which one is in the set, x or y, two ways of doing that. Then, there will be 2n, choose n, subsets of that type, multiplication principle. So there are two times 2n choose n of this type. Now, maybe I'll, I will, I'll stay over here. You see how we're finished? Because to complete the proof, you know, all of these types are different. There is no subset of n plus 1 elements that is at the same time here or here or here because you cannot be. Either they're both in, neither is in, or exactly one is in. So all of these types are different, therefore we can just add. So then, um, I'm kind of out of space. So maybe we can just say down at the bottom, therefore, the right-hand side counts the number of subsets of B with n plus 1 elements. And this would complete our proof because we've already shown the left-hand side counts the same thing. Okay, the binomial theorem is this. It says about expanding powers of a binomial x plus y. It's quite a, a powerful theorem. In particular, we will use it here. Let's take, um, we will do x is minus 1 and y is 1 in the binomial theorem. Then, we have the following. So we have minus 1 plus 1 to the n is the sum, k equals 0 to n, n choose k. It's going to be minus 1 to the k, 1 to the n minus k. And now let's start writing out some terms. First of all, this is 0 to the n, which is 0. So when k equals 0, we get n choose 0. Minus 1 to the 0 is positive 1. When k equals 1, we get a negative 1. When k is 2, we have minus 1 squared, which is 1. When k equals 3, etc., all the way out to, well, it's going to be, now we know what the plus or minus is. It's minus 1 to the n. And this is exactly what we are trying to prove. So that part is finished. Okay, now for a combinatorial description. Okay. Let's look at this. N choose 0 plus N choose 2 plus. Okay, I move everything with the odd K over to this side. So these are things with the negatives in front of them. I move them over. What's a description of this? Okay, so I'm going to say let A be the set 1, 2, 3 to n. Okay? Then the left hand side, well, this is the number of zero element subsets, the number of two element subsets of A, the number of four element subsets of A. Okay, so everything over here, so the left-hand side counts the number of subsets of A with even cardinality. And then, this 
That's a five. <laughs> the right hand side, well, this is the number of subsets with one element, number of subsets with three, number of subsets with five, etc. So the right hand side counts the number of subsets of A with an odd cardinality. So the combinatorial description of what it means, okay, maybe I won't write anymore until the next frame, but it says that the number of subsets of 1 through n with even cardinality equals the number of subsets of 1 through n with odd cardinality. Now what I have done is I have moved everything that was down here up to the top, so we have this identity in blue that was a consequence of something we proved using the binomial theorem. However, what we want to do is sort of see why it's true um, or prove another way without using the binomial theorem. And all I've done is rephrased what I had in a way that is more precise mathematically and gives us something to work with. So I let A be the numbers 1 through N, and I've marked 1 as like, special. It's green and blue. We will see why I did that momentarily. So A is 1 through N, and then the set X is all subsets of A with even cardinality. It's exactly what this says. Y is all subsets of A with odd cardinality. So in particular, you know, if you like to think about power sets, you can see that the union of X and Y gives you the power set of A. Um, but in any case, what matters here is that the cardinality of X gives us the left-hand side, as I mentioned, right? It gives us all the number of all subsets of A with even cardinality, and that's exactly this set. And then the cardinality of Y is the right-hand side, because this counts all subsets of A with odd cardinality. Okay, so this is this blue. Now we want to prove basically this blue identity, that these two cardinalities are the same, without using the binomial theorem. But I put this little idea in blue because I think part of the proof that we need to check I will leave to you that we might do in a group working class. But I will get us going. So the way I'm going to do this, we have to jump forward and use current material, which is the language of functions. So what I will do is I will define a function that goes from x to y as follows. Now what does this mean for my function? We really have to think it means the domain of my function is x, namely f takes n a subset of a with an even number of elements. This is the set of inputs, the domain. And then it better give me out a subset of A with an odd number of elements. So the image needs to be contained in Y. Okay, well, so F on a subset, maybe I will call it C. So C is now a subset of A. Well, I have two cases, and this is why I have this one marked as a special point. So we know either one is an element of this subset, or one is not an element of this subset. I'm taking a subset of A with even cardinality. It has two, four, six, eight, zero, etc. If it has even cardinality and one is in the set, then I can take C and, and take away, this is set difference, this set. This will be a subset of A with odd cardinality. For instance, if this has four things and it contains one, this will have three things. Okay, now, if it does not contain one, then I will do this. Okay, so maybe let's do an example of what this function does before I do anything else. So I will come over here for an example. f of, well, I need some subset of 
The numbers one through n with an even number of elements. Let's take one, two, seven, and eight. I don't know what n is in this case. It's just something bigger than or equal to eight. Well, this has four elements. This is even. It contains one. By this definition, this would be, well, we remove it, two, seven, eight. And you see, this is a subset of one through n with an odd number of elements. Or, for example, if I did f of, let's say I did 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Oh, that's odd. 7. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements. It's an even number. We can evaluate the function here. This does not contain 1. So my function would add 1 to this set. And I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six and seven, which is an odd number of elements. Okay, so this function maps subsets of the numbers one through n with an even number of elements. That's here. Two subsets of the numbers one through n with an odd number of elements. Okay. Now, the claim, and this is why I have in parentheses idea, because I will leave this, I think, to group work, the claim is that F is a bijection. That means it's one to one and on to. And we proved in class that if you have a bijection between two finite sets, immediately you know they have the same cardinality. So this is an argument. Okay, so I'm gonna, no, I won't put my box because it was just an idea. So the claim, I'll say later in group work. But this is how we could prove this identity without using the binomial theorem at all, is with this map. I will do one more combinatorial proof. However, first let's get straight this notation because all three of these you might see in a different text. You might see in capital PR, P of NR, and this is less common, but it's this in parentheses and then a sub R. They all stand for the same thing, which is the number of R permutations of N elements. So we discuss this in class. Suppose I have a class of 20, and I would like to line five of you up at this board. So this would be a five permutation of 20 elements, okay? And this is the number of ways to do this, the number of this number, and so is this. These are equal, and we've discussed this formula. What we'd like to show, though, is that n squared is n p2 plus n, but I don't want to just use this, this expression and, and, and do an algebraic proof where, where I just distribute and add, and then I have n squared, what I'd like to do is a combinatorial proof, arguing that both the left and the right-hand sides count the same thing, so proof. So suppose, so we're going to use an alphabet with n letters to create first and last initials. So the question is, how many initials can I make? Well, we can make all together in total, this is multiplication rule. We have an alphabet of n letters. We have n choices for the first letter, n choices for the second letter. So multiplication rule says we can make n times n or n squared um, total first and last initials. using this alphabet. Very nice. This is what the left-hand side counts. Now, what about the right-hand side? 
Okay, well, let's consider first the initials uh, with no repetition, or I'll say without repeating letters. How many of these do we have without repeating a letter? How many of these do we have? Okay, well, we have exactly exactly this many such initials why well you're choosing there's an order here it's a first and a last so it's a two permutation from our alphabet of n letters or you know if you think about multiplication rule here would be exactly like this we have n choices for the first letter, and n minus one choices if we do not repeat for the second letter. There are, additionally, n initials that repeat a letter. And why is this? Well, again, multiplication rule. You have n possibilities out of your alphabet for the first letter. And once you've chosen the first letter, you only have one possibility for the second letter. So multiplication rule, we would multiply and get exactly n. All in total, we have n, p, 2, plus n. Uh, first and last initials. Therefore, we have completed the proof, which is that NP2 plus N is equal to N squared.